It's Monday, February 8th, 2021, and the Morning Edition is live. On today's show, we talk with the only heart transplant patient, a young Bahamian turning his love for sports and psychology into a career. And it's Valentine's Week. We'll show you how to say I love you in a unique way. So let's start the morning off right. Part and care for your heart. Good morning and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. And I'm Charles Fisher. Busy weekend. Boy Fisher, it was fogging outside this morning. I could barely see it on my way here to work. When it I was got up awful. and I looked outside, I thought it was somewhere <laughs> in Canada or one of mm. those places. It was foggy. Then when I went on the road to drive the way, you know, we, got, we get here early, it, I, I had to go like 10 miles per hour because mm. I couldn't see right in front of me. And then I kept my, my, my windshield wipers on. Mm. And persons waking up this morning, this is what you saw coming out this morning. It was it was, I haven't seen it like this in quite some time. And you know what, there was also a stench in the air. I don't know if you were able to smell that because I'm sure you were driving with your, your windows up. You Why were, are you driving with your windows down? No, because so I had know. to walk out of my car and punch in and I was able to smell the stench of the fog. So, so it's really, and, really foggy and, and, and outside. It was, it, was not, it was not cold, it, it, it was hot on the outside. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm waiting for meteorologists to explain exactly what happened this morning because this was something that we did not see coming. Uh, we see a half, well, even half a quarter of a moon there. Yesterday mm -hmm. it was quite nice, the weather was outside. Uh, so we, 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 this is what we woke up to, and hopefully that fog has, has gone by now as persons begin to make their way to and from wherever they are going. But And you know, this is not the first time that we've experienced fogging. I think late January we had fogging as well. I think it was just a little bit, not as, as heavy yeah, that, as it and was and this that's morning. That's when we got the call from the Linden Penning International Airport yes, at all. Yes. And I wonder if flights were able to get out this morning without yes. fog. But no visibility, it was right. I had to keep mm -hmm. my windshield wipers on, it was right in front of me, couldn't, couldn't move at all. But I do believe uh, flights will, will per, I guess, peruse as normal this morning. I spoke to Jan Nose this morning and she said that things should go pretty smoothly that's despite good. what we're seeing outside. That, that, is, that is pretty good. Well, Lloyd Allen, he is on the outside. He, he's one of those persons like us who get to work pretty early. And Lloyd, I know you're out there with the traffic cops. How are they managing things this morning? The Traffic Report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance, today, tomorrow. Well, good morning, LaDawn and Fisher. It's an interesting start to the Monday morning as conditions around the island and possibly throughout the country are a bit fuzzy. As I was making my morning commute, driving along the coast and even here in the inner city, uh, conditions are quite foggy. Uh, I want to say that uh, beyond 200 feet, it gets quite blurry. And so the obvious advice to motorists as well as pedestrians, is to traverse with caution and care. Helping us to understand traffic conditions over the weekend is uh, Sergeant Preston A. Johnson from the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division. Good morning, Officer Johnson. A pleasant good morning to you and a pleasant good morning, Bahamas. Well, over the weekend period, we've had a total of 35 accidents. 28 of those accidents involved damage. Seven of those accidents involved injury. One of those accidents also occurred yesterday, which involved a male pedestrian that was struck and the driver of that vehicle fled that scene. At uh, this time, we have 13 persons who remain hospitalized as a result of being involved in a traffic accident. Now, Officer Johnson, as you just indicated, there was at least one hit and run yesterday. Conditions were quite different than they are today. But uh, considering the conditions on the outdoors today, I know that you have some advice for driving in a fog. Yes, of course. One of the main things we want to concern the motoring public with is the fact that with the dense fog, you're going to be limited as, we, as it relates to your vision. And you want to be careful, like you stated before, of pedestrian traffic. Realize that your vehicle is not the only vehicle on the street and you want to maintain your traveling distance. During this time, you want to increase the distance that you're following behind a vehicle with because sometimes that vehicle may have to stop. And if that vehicle stops suddenly, we want to decrease the chance of accidents happening. Along with that, we're asking as much as possible if you're traveling in residential areas to please slow down if your average speed is going to be like 30 miles per hour you want to decrease that to at least 
25 miles per hour to increase your reaction time. As much as possible, please follow these rules. If your windshield wipers are not in proper working order, this is not the day to be operating that particular vehicle. As much as possible, try not to utilize your high beams, utilize your fog lights, utilize the heat mechanism in your vehicle to try to get those vehicles defogged. And then, of course, uh, you touched on it earlier, but I want to uh, rehash it again for those pedestrians. I want to remind them, you know, while you may uh, presume that someone may see you, these are very difficult uh, uh, conditions. And so it may be difficult for drivers to see those walkers as they're making their rounds yeah. across the yeah. street. And my mind goes especially on the, those persons who are utilizing the bus services. We have a number of people who cross, the, who cross the street in front of those drivers. And when you toss in front of the drivers, if there's somebody coming around, that person may not see you. So in that case, we're asking as much as possible, pedestrian traffic, please, as much as the, motor, the motoring public, Please, if you're on the street, please traverse the street with added care and caution. We want to arrive alive. We want to do this properly. We want to, to, to do everything with knowledge. Think before you act. If you're crossing the street, make sure that you maintain eye contact with that driver and that driver knows that you're going to cross that street. And, of course, that's been your quick look at your Monday morning traffic report. Again, drive with caution and care to arrive alive. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Lord. Let's stay on the outside, taking a look now. Fog continues. We're in the 70s, a big change from last week where it was a chill. Looking at extended forecast, we're getting back into the 80s during the day. That should be good for beachgoers. That trend will continue through Saturday. Well, let's take a look now at stories making news headlines. Prime Minister of the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis says he's committed to offering the best team possible for government as the party prepares to unveil a full slate of candidates for the 2022 general elections. In a statement released Sunday, party leader the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis is quoted as saying that the party will privately inform incumbents who will not be nominated again before it makes a public announcement. $3.2 million pumped into road improvement in Elbow Key. Residents are happy about the move and the impact it will have. Environmental causes are very important to us in our community here in Hopetown. So it's great to um, see this dune restored. Finally, the road is in place and now we can work to restore and secure um, our dune, especially the vegetation that will help protect us from future storms. Today, government officials are pleased with the progress being made to reconstruct the Little Abaco Bridge, the structure that joins Little Abaco to Great Abaco. The bridge sustained significant damage during Hurricane Dorian, and that prompted Ministry of Works officials to issue an $8.3 million contract to SJK Engineering and construction to literally build a new bridge. So what you're seeing here today and right now, we're trying to install these tie box for the for the abutment wall. The purpose of these is to kind of hold the whole structure together. It's really an earthquake mechanism, so if you do have an earthquake in Abaco, which is highly unlikely, if it shakes, it doesn't move. So these things are like, like almost like a clump to hold everything together from front to back, and we also have to install these from side to side. After this is done, we have to backfill. This whole area, about the, the height of this dead man in the back of us, straight down there, about 500 feet. That's the length of the launching nose. That launching nose has to go so far because there's a counterweight. We have to pull this bridge all the way across 267 feet to meet the, the abutment on the next side. So we don't have a counterweight over here to stop it. It's going to fall over into the sea. So we have to backfill this entire area nice and level. So when we launch the bridge, we don't have any hiccups. And after we're done with that, we're going to cut the profile back down to grade it to the road elevation so it's nice and smooth. And the transition from the bridge back to the existing road you know, when you're driving, you don't feel like you're doing like that. Family members of three men still missing at sea are asking for your assistance. Dorian Strawn, sister to 63-year-old James McPhee, one of the three men who went fishing on January 31st, is pleading for your help. She said her brother and his two friends, Barry and Steve, left Pardeski Dock around midday last Sunday. That was the last time anyone heard or seen the trio. It's so painful right now, I guess, for all the families. You know, and to know that they went missing and on a dinghy boat and the weather was bad, you know, I just don't know what to say. You know, if we can only hear some kind of news that to say, well, they drift to another island or even if they went Cuba, you know, if somebody could just call and just let us know what's happening, you know. Well, fish of the big morning in sports.
Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Tom Brady, <laughs> the GOAT. Tenth Super Bowl, seventh ring. But I was happy for Antonio Brown, mm. uh, Leonard Fournette, uh, t persons like those who teams said they didn't want him anymore and they went yesterday. But I didn't like the score. I, I was expecting a much closer game. Yeah, it looked as if the score never changed. Cause it, was, it was 9 to 31 for like most of the game, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I think Rashad Fenton, he's a Bahamian. Yeah, he played with Kansas City. City. Yeah. They did not have a good game at all. Tampa Bay defense just stuck to their game plan. Uh, well, what you can say about Brady, they, mm -hmm. they, he, he, he is up there right now. It's one of the greatest in sports. You can be with Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Stuff like that. It's, when his name comes up, you hear Tom Brady. I wonder how New England fans are feeling this morning after he left them and Boy, he won a championship. I don't know because my brother is a New England Patriots fan. I don't know how that. I don't know how that that went well. Well, it was know. also a big weekend for uh, track and field athletes locally mm -hmm. on the indoor scene. Laquan Nen he set a new Bahamian record in the long jump, 26 feet nine and a quarter inches. It was a runner performance at the American Track League meet. The then Ma better the previous record of 26-7 set by Superman Levan Sands. And that was back in 2004 at the Herm Wilson Invitational hosted by Richard R. State. All Robert Senior Sasha Wells broke her own school record in the 60 meter hurls by nine one hundredth of a second. Wells won an 8.21 seconds, besting a previous mark of 8.30. That also the best time in the Summit League so far this season and ranks 14th in the NCAAs. And Washington State's sophomore Charisma Taylor also with a good weekend at the Arkansas qualifier. Taylor equal a school record in the 60 hurdles, finishing in 8.19 seconds for second place. She was also second in the triple jump with a best of 43 feet, seven and three quarters. And when we come back, a young Bahamian is turning his love for sports and psychology into a career. So keep it locked. You're watching The Morning Edition. It's still Heart Month, and oftentimes we would feature the parents of children with heart defects in urgent need of surgeries to save their lives. But well, this morning, we have Tony Watkins, the only Bahamian recipient of a heart transplant, who will celebrate his 65th birthday on the 27th of February. Tony Watkins, welcome to the Morning Edition. Thank you. So, Tony, tell us why was it so crucial for you to get this much-needed uh, heart transplant? Well, about 20 years ago, I suffered a series of heart attacks, about three in a six-hour span. And um, over the years, well, they told me my heart would deteriorate. And over the years, it started to deteriorate. In 2012, um, it came to the point where I couldn't tie my shoelace. I couldn't walk from here to the camera without stopping for five minutes to catch my breath. So it was decided that um, I should be listed um, for a transplant. I was then um, sent to Florida to Cleveland Clinic Hospital, where they did a series of tests. And they told me I had to relocate to Florida in order to be listed. In April of 2014, I was officially listed for a heart, as a recipient for a heart. What was that process like getting on the list? And talk about the surgery. Was that expensive for you? Well, getting on the list, um, it was easy. Uh, they did a series of tests to determine whether you were eligible to be listed. And then there was a process that you had to go through where they would do these random tests on you um, all hours of the night, all hours of the morning, they would come to your residence to ensure that you're sticking with the program. You're not using drugs, you're not using alcohol. Um, if they find any of that in your system, then you would be removed from the list. Um, but it was a smooth process to be listed. The problem was, um, after being listed, the wait time. Was there ever a time in your mind or a doubt in your mind that you were possibly going to die if you didn't get that transplant? No, I never had that doubt in my mind. Um, I was prepared to die. I had no problem with that if it came to that. But my faith in God is what sustained me. Um, I realized that I came into this world to die, and 
So my time was up, and um, I accepted that if it came to that. But I had no doubt that I would die because, like I said, my faith in God is what sustained me and put me through. And it's such a coincidence that you're born in Heart Month. How are you planning to celebrate another year of life? Um, it was the great anticipation of reading. Um, I went through a series of uh, medical challenges that, because my heart kept deteriorating, and um, the challenges were very, very uh, severe and um, at times unbearable. And how are you planning to celebrate your 65th birthday? Well, my birthday is just another, actually I celebrate the 8th of December, the 3rd, the 4th of December, because that's the day of my new beginning, my transplant. Tony Watkins, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition. All the best of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, this morning, we introduce you to a young man with a very bright future, Alex McKenzie, a master's candidate at the University of Windsor in Canada, started his university career at Western, where he completed his BA with honors in psychology, but that was not his first love. I used to play competitively football uh, in high school, highly touted, but life got in the way, injuries got in the way, so I wasn't able to really reach my full potential. However, I realized that I still would be able to make a career out of sports, just not necessarily as an athlete, but through other avenues. And initially, I wanted to be a social worker. I'm not going to lie to you. This is like in between the whole, I can't play football no more, so what am I going to do? I took this course, showed me how exciting psychology is, and that really uh, flourished my love for it. And when I found out that you can combine sport so something I already had a passion for with this newfound passion, I felt like I hit the lotto. So just what is sports psychology? Very, very broad feel like it can deal with the more applied part. So like looking at athletes directly being like, okay, you can't hit your free throws. You, you have the best three point shot in the league, but why can't you hit your free throws? That's when it comes to here, right? Certain aspects like that, but then it can also be on the research side where you're looking at, okay, where are they looking when they're looking at the free throw? So there's the, the applied part, there's the practice part. But the thing is, is with sports psychology is that it lends itself to other aspects of psychology. So there's sports psychologists who actually work with uh, police officers, high trained military police, whatever it may be. So that speaks more to the performance part. So realistically, what sports psychology really is trying to get at is improving performance while also improving the quality of life for people. As a graduate student, he is afforded the opportunity to lecture. So what I'm doing right now uh, is teaching sports therapy. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, it's a little bit out of my discipline because it's more physiology, but it's really, really nice way to take yourself outside of that discipline. So how are you adjusting to not only being away from home, but COVID and the cold weather of Canada. Boy, it ain't easy. Luckily, actually, I just came back from home. I did a little uh, two, three week break. I really needed it. Like, it, I was away from about like almost a year and all my family is home. So it's very difficult. But I find that in these trying times, you have to find ways to find, I call it like your proverbial beach. I, um, I love out on Cabbage Beach, all the way to the end by Ocean Club. That's what I vision, vision when outside is snow and bristling cold. I take myself to that beach. Uh, I find ways to, to meditate. My biggest thing too is to keep busy. As we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history on February 8, 1974. Clement Maynard was named World Tourism Man of the Year. The award was presented to the tourism minister for his personality, an outstanding job in promoting the Bahamas as a tourism destination. Also on February 8, 2000, the Coalition for Democratic Reform was launched. 
former Progressive Liberal Party member Dr. Bernard Nottage was named interim leader. Buddy Hill and the Sacramento Kings on fire in the NBA. The Kings beat the Los Angeles Clippers yesterday for the second straight time. 113-110. Buddy just shot off a double-double. 22 points, 9 rebounds. The Kings are now back above 500 at 12-11 and, and sit ninth in the Western Conference. Heading to another big game tomorrow with the Philadelphia 76ers. Sacramento's won seven of their eight last games. First time they've done that since 2006. The last time they were in the playoffs. After the game, Buddy was asked if this was the best he's played since being with the Kings. You know, I haven't been on a winning team since we in the league, but, uh, you know, we just got to stay humble, keep working, and, uh, and I think that we're in a good group right now. And, uh, and uh, no matter who's having a success tonight, just go out there and uh, try to play winning basketball and come out with the ultimate goals, come out with a win. You know, you can't be one dimension on this team, you know, guys. You do, uh, do multiple stuff and uh, uh, do this. Doing stuff like that, making plays, uh, using my strengths, and uh, help my teammates get involved, and uh, when I can rebound the ball or defend a little bit, and uh, just do what my team called me to do. And uh, it's all about winning games, and uh, that's all that matters. And that's like everybody gets a picture. Once we win games, uh, nobody's nobody's crying, nobody's making excuses. DeAndre Ayton and the Phoenix Suns also picked up a big win yesterday, 191 over. My Boston Celtics. The big man had 16 points and 11 rebounds. Suns currently 13 and 9, fourth in the Western Conference. They have a double back to back. They are back on the court tonight against those Cleveland Cavaliers. And when we come back, saying I love you in a unique way this Valentine's Day. So keep it locked. Valentine's Day is right around the corner and it's at this time you will see dozens of roses, either red or pink, being dropped off to many businesses and offices for or from that special someone in your life. But have you ever thought about switching things up and adding some roses made out of real money to the arrangement? Well, we caught up with an attorney to talk about her unique roses. I wanted to give gifts and those gifts would be in the form of money. So um, last Christmas, I decided why not make this a reality. And turning that dream into reality is what attorney at law Rachet Presenti is doing by transforming real money into elegant and luxury roses. While not letting out how she carves these rich roses into floral arrangements, Rachet says her customers are intrigued by her unique designs. I recently delivered a, a, an arrangement on Friday Pass. And the, the reception, the reaction that I got from the customer was mind-blowing. I mean, she was in tears, literally in tears, because the person that had blessed her with this gift didn't know that this person was actually, or maybe they did know, but the person was in need of funds. And so we, uh, we prepared an arrangement with the $5 notes. And I mean, she was just in tears because she was so appreciative of the monies. I used the $50 notes for my mother's gift for Christmas, hence the amount of money that she got. So I have used the 50s. And the way it works is uh, the customer basically decides the note that they want to be included in the rose. If they want to use $100 notes, they certainly can. We're not limited to just the $1 notes. But that's not all this unique attorney has up her sleeves. Also, she plans to bring some additional features to wow her customers. Mother's Day is coming up. We've already learned how to design the corsages. Um, as well, we have boutonnieres for men. So we're looking at targeting the weddings. So anyone interested in having money as a boutonniere or even as a little, um, you know, those uh, corsages that you have on your hand, we're going to be introducing them as well. The attorney who's excited about officially unleashing her business for Valentine's Day is encouraging all budding entrepreneurs to dare to be different and never hesitate to try. 
Fisher, I think I want one of those. Uh, I think I want the hundred dollar bills and the fifty dollar bills. So what are you gonna what are you gonna bring for the ladies in the newsroom do, for do, Valentine's you, Day? You, you remember you we and I had this you remember the other day you and I had this conversation <laughs> with them collecting pennies? Does she make the flowers now with the pennies? No, she doesn't it's, it's, make it's it a lot of pennies. leftover Just pennies. Just fifties and a hundred. It's a lot of leftover bills. pennies, so, so we, she could she could make good use of those so I could bring for the ladies here in the newsroom. <laughs> a penny here, a penny there, oh, a penny gosh. everywhere. See what we like nice things. We want the you know the fifties, the twenties, the hundreds. You know, you. So are I'm you sure one of those? A, so you are you one pocket. of those ladies today that will be? Because you say that the Monday before <laughs> Valentine is the most busiest day for sales for flowers. Are you one of those ladies that are going to the store today to buy your own flowers? No, so no. by the time you, you'll be one no. of the first to get your delivery. But I want you. We want you and Gator and the rest of the men around here to supply us with the nice rich roses for Valentine's Day. I'm sure you're gonna. You're gonna think about it, right? I know Johnny, Gator, <laughs> Teron, who are working on uh, Donny and Rodney, them will be looking for a lot of pennies. Call her, let's see if she can make some of the pennies, because there's a lot of y'all in here. Oh my God. And I sure Gator and I have a lot of pennies <laughs> lying around. It'll be nice and pretty. A penny for you, little dog. Not even much how much I think about you, but that's a penny. Oh for you. my gosh. Thanks a lot, Fisher. <laughs> and that's our show for this morning for the entire team. I'm the Don Davis. Have a great day, everyone. He said, now nobody moves. Oh